Willie D Live. It's Willie D, y'all. Back with another episode of information and instructions to help you navigate through this wild, crazy, beautiful world. In the studio, Miko Grimes. What's up, Miko? What's up? Hey. We finally meet. Finally meet yes. in person. Yes, finally. Wow. I apologize. Uh, we were supposed to meet a couple weeks ago. No, nah, that's good. It's it's all yeah. good. You're here. I'm you know? here. It's all, you know, like when you have a... a a postponement or a cancellation or something like that, and then somebody, uh, as long as they show up the next time, mm -hmm. it's almost like when you're waiting in line for your food or something, and it takes a long time, or you're sitting at at a restaurant, you're waiting to eat, and it's taking like, oh, damn. damn. And as soon as the food come out, you forgot all about that. You start eating. Happen. Exactly. It didn't, didn't even happen. happen. Yes, didn't so even, I appreciate like you. Never happened. I appreciate you still <laughs> extending the invitation and and waiting on me to you know make sure that our schedules lined up. So this Absolutely. was perfect. This is the perfect week for me to be out here. So Absolutely. thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's go. Let's go. <laughs> you from St. Louis? Yes. Born, what, well, you know what? what? Part, People what say I'm Louis? not from St. Louis. Let me ask you if I'm from St. Louis. Let me ask you. Okay. So I was born in St. Louis. Okay. And my mother left and moved to L.A. when I was four. Okay. Am I from St. Louis? You're from St. Louis. I'm from St. Louis then. You're okay. from St. Louis. <laughs> See, and I absolutely hate. When people move to L.A., specifically L.A., it's something about mm -hmm. L.A. People like to claim it. When they move to L.A., and I'm saying a, a lot of people that I know mm -hmm. from, from Houston have moved to L.A. Mm -hmm. And some of them get over to L.A. and start acting like they from L.A. Yeah. Well, people always tell me you're not from St. Louis. Like, you didn't go to elementary here. You didn't go to middle school. You didn't go to high school. I went to elementary, middle school, high school, and college in L.A. Mm -hmm. So that's what people are like, nah, you can't. Like, even though my whole family's from St. Louis, they're like, nah, you L.A. now. You, they don't even want to claim me in <laughs> St. Louis. They're like, you left before you was even, you know, anything. So I'm like, well, okay. So I always claim and rep both sides of that because right. I have an entire family in St. Louis. And then half of my family, when, I, when my mom moved, half of her siblings moved to L.A. as well. So uh. all my cousins, like all of us grew up. In L.A. So I just claim, I rep both sides. So your mom's like the leader of the family or something? Like um, she make people kind of trust her decisions? Well, I think my mom was like um, the life of the party. Okay. She was the fun girl. She was the it girl. My mother was a chef. She opened a restaurant. Everybody wants her food. She, was, she had a catering company. She, you know cooked for a lot of celebrity people in L.A. And so she she always, and I feel like that's a part of me that is like her. Like, I'm the life of the party. I throw a lot of parties. I have a lot of fun. And but can you cook? Absolutely. You cook? One thousand percent. That's probably one of the best things about me is my food. Yeah? Yeah. Like, outside of sports. <laughs> huh. What, yeah. what was that nucleus like growing up for you? And in, in, first of all, and starting with St. Louis, and then after you guys migrated to L.A., what was that? What was the house? What was that household <sighs> like? Who was in that household? Was your mom and dad together? No. So was... this is a crazy story. So my mother moved to L.A. Uh, and my dad didn't know, and he tried to fight for custody of me. I find this out way this is later when in they life. Were sep they were already separated, dad, and then she moved yes. to L.A. without his knowledge. Yes, and he tried to fight for visitation for me and he found that I wasn't his child well he knew I think he knew but I'm not really sure but he tried to fight for visitation and they wouldn't give him any visitation because I wasn't biologically his child I didn't find that out till I was 28 so what my mother did was she still allowed me to visit him in St. Louis one month of the summer until I was about 11 or 12 and I had to tell my dad like hey I can't keep coming to St. Louis to see you because it's messing up my AAU, my basketball. Like, you know, the summer is where I really can get active, but I have to go to St. Louis for a month. And so he kind of understood and didn't, you know, put pressure on me to come back anymore after that, like, you know, for the summer and stuff like that. But I, was, I grew up the oldest in the house in L.A. because my two older sisters, their father did not let them go to L.A. with my mother. They, he kept them. So my mother had five children. I was a mid <laughs> I was the middle child. So these two older ones stayed in St. Louis with their dad, and us three went to L.A. with my mom. So I grew up like the, the oldest child in the house for the most of my life. And what about your biological father? 
I do not know who you that never met is. Him? No, my mother does not want me to know who it is. She just refuses to. I try to look for him. I try to find him, and I think that um, she's embarrassed. Um, I did that little twenty three and Me thing, and because like my siblings used to make fun of me growing up, like I don't look like any of them. They used to always say I was adopted and all this stuff, and I just didn't really understand. Like you know, I don't look like my mom. I you know, I I, I don't look like them. And so I did the little 23 and Me and asked my sister to do it with me. And then I found out why I don't look like them. And my DNA is like 22% white. So I was like, what the fuck? Like, is my dad white? Like, is he what? Like, you know, and I try to talk to my mom about it. She does not want to talk about it. She's just like, let it go. You have a dad. You have someone that loves you, that's been in your life your whole life. Just let him be your dad. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't look like either one of you guys. I kind of want to know where I came from, you know? And I'm like the only sibling. Well, one of my other sisters, too, has a question about her father, too. But, like, I just don't know. I have no idea who he is. I don't know if he knows that I exist or anything. Do you continue to put pressure on your mom or I gave you just up. let it go? I gave up last year, honestly. We had a big, huge fight about it. A big, big, big fight about it. There was, is, is her mom alive? No, my grandmother passed in 2004. Do your mom have sisters? Yes. And a best friend that she's been best friends with forever? Several. That's who you go to? I did. They well, got the information. I did. I did. Some threats were made to shut up. Really? Yeah. What? Yeah, that's what I found out. <laughs> Yeah, was your dad a gangster or something? Uh, um, uh, 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 FBI what? informant or something? I have no idea. Uh, All I think is like my mom and her siblings were having a time in the 70s. And a lot of us don't know who our real fathers are. That's what we found out. Now this whole DNA thing is happening and everybody's doing this DNA testing and stuff and everybody's finding out that the man their their mom said is their dad is not their dad. You know, and so mm-hmm. I think they all just want us to leave it alone. Do you know that they have a new law that they are, I think it probably just passed, in Tennessee? What law? It's a law that will now punish women for lying about the maternity oh, of the father. Oh, I did see that. I and, did. I and, like that. And, and it's, it's um, they're going to punish women for lying about who the baby daddy is, and they also are going to uh, uh, make them uh, do a DNA test before the birth certificate is signed. I like that. I'm not even going to lie. I like that. I think women should be honest if they don't know who it is. Just say, I don't know. Don't pin it on somebody because, like like you said, my, you know, people grow up their whole life and think that somebody's their father and it's not. It's, it's not cool. I get it back in the day. You could say somebody was their child and they had to pay child support. There was no DNA, you mm-hmm. know? And so I, I'm with it. I'm not even going to lie. Yeah. I, I tried to get my husband to do a DNA test on my son when he was born. He was like, why are you doing that? Because his family hated me so much. Mm-hmm. They were like, it's probably not even your baby. Like, they were kind of throwing shit at me, texting me all rude, disrespectful stuff. So I was like, let's get a DNA test. And he was like, no, I'm not listening to them. And I was like, okay, cool. I just want to make sure you don't, like, you're not listening to the text messages from your family that's trying to bash me and everything. Like, he was like, I'm not hearing that. Well, well, did Aiden look like him when he was born, the way he looked like, like him now? Cause he's, well, he, I think he looks like me now, but some people think he looks like Brent. I don't know, but yeah, he, when he was born, actually, he looked like both of our both of mothers. Oh, okay. Like, he looked like a combination of my mom and Brent's mom to me. Yeah. And it was very weird, but he was pale, so Brent's family is a lot of white. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he was super-duper pale and all that, so I was like, gotta be, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even like, barely like light-skinned niggas. <laughs> so, but yeah, but he just... He he wasn't ever tripping. He was like, nah. But he, some people say he looks like me, and then some people are like, oh no, he looks just like Brent. I think it just depends on the day. One mm-hmm. day he looks like me. One day he definitely has my personality though, for okay. sure. Yeah. Why did his parents hate you? And um, why did his side of the family hate you? Well, um, I'm older than him, and so they like thought I was a gold digger, which was very strange because he didn't have any money when How I many got years with him. Part of you? 
eight years. Okay. So they thought I was a gold digger. Most people think that because you're in the NFL that you're rich. Brent was not even playing. So I don't even know. He was in the practice squad for three years. He played in NFL Europe. He didn't have no money. But they just assumed that I got with him for his money. And then how fast it went, like how quick he proposed to me, how quickly we got married. And then what happened was um, when he wanted me to come to all the games and, like, support him, even though he wasn't playing, he wanted me to be there and stuff like that, I had to quit my jobs. I had to quit what I was doing to be there for him. Mm -hmm. So when that happened, I was like, I'm— like, I'm being realistic. I was I was covering the Falcons when I met him. He was on the Falcons team. Mm -hmm. And I said, I can't quit all my jobs and my careers and everything without knowing what your finances look like. So I said, I need to get into that bank account. And then when I got into that bank account, I saw who else was in that bank account. And I shut all that shit down. Who else was in the bank account? Family. Everybody. Oh, that's what they was worried about. They was worried about you sticking your hand in that pot. I cut everybody off. We ain't got it. This man ain't even got off the bench yet, and y'all over here begging for money every month. Uh. So that's why they didn't like me. I I became I control the finances still to this day. Well, do have any of them had a change of heart since? Uh, you know, it's been thirteen years now. Y'all been married? Oh well, me and his mom, like, okay, we're cool. But the rest of them, no, I don't fuck with none of them. Ooh, can I cut? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, I don't fuck with none of them. His father has. But but you're good with his mom. Yeah, yeah. That's a big one. Yeah. That's. I moved her to Florida. That's the biggest hurdle. That's mm -hmm. the biggest one. If the if the wife can get along with mom, we've had our ups and downs though. But that's good. But yes, but his mother, I will always cherish. Her just because of the things she did for him. Yeah. The way she raised him alone for the most part. His father uh, was a drug addict. He's passed now. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't really in his life like that. And so his mother kind of, they grew up so poor. They didn't have water all the time. They didn't have hot water. They didn't have food all the time. She didn't eat sometimes just to buy him cleats so he could have mm -hmm. a pair of cleats and basketball shoes just to play. So I'll always respect a mother like that. Like, even if we have our ups and downs, I know that she's a good woman. You know? I watched some type of special or documentary or something where another mother did that for her son. Some star basketball player mm -hmm. mother did that for him. Uh, just put every. It was him and a brother. It, it was some show I saw. Mm -hmm. It was a star basketball player and his brother. Was it? Was it LeBron? Uh, LeBron don't have any siblings, though, so it couldn't. Have oh, been so it LeBron. wasn't LeBron. No. Um, I don't know. Maybe it'll come back to me. But in any event. I didn't the, have that. Woman, That's why I liked her too. I didn't. Yeah. My mother didn't support me like that when I was playing sports. It wasn't. Yeah. So when I heard how amazing she was, I just always wanted him to never forget uh. that and always give her the world, give her whatever she wants. Like you know. So I always told him that, and I did. I did things for her just to show her my appreciation for. Her. She's the reason that we live like this. Mm -hmm. If I'm being honest, you know yeah. what I mean? So me and the mom, will, she'll always, you know, be cool with me. The rest of them can kiss the darkest part of my ass if I'm being honest. <laughs> 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 yeah, I still don't fool with not a single one. I like it when people put something on top of it. You could have just said, they can kiss my ass. Kiss the darkest part the of my dark, ass. The part that drag yeah, like on my, stuff. Yeah, I like the angles. <laughs> I like when you put that angle in there, man. That's, that's the <laughs> difference between your... your, your uh, cap and another person's cap. Now, you guys have one child. Yeah. Are you thinking about having any At, more? I, we didn't want any. Didn't he want and any? I didn't want children. Neither one of us wanted to be married. We just wanted to be together until we didn't want to. Okay. And then his mother... Cried so about it. She, he's an only child. So uh, my mom and his mom hang out. They vibe. They get together. My mom is all. Let me show you my fourteen grandchildren. Da, 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 da. Uh, and she was like, uh, "You guys aren't having any kids. I want to be a grandmother. Why don't I get to be a grandmother? Mm -hmm. I deserved." Uh, da, 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 da. And I, I was telling him like, "Leave me alone." Now we already said no kids. Like you know, I had a career. I had things I wanted to do. And I, you know, and he was just like, "Can you just give her one, just one?" 
And I said, well, if we have a kid, then we got to get married, don't we? Because no, you know what I mean? Like, that's just how it's supposed to go. Like, and he was just like, well, then shit. All right, let's go. And so he wanted the baby. This is a crazy story. We were planning to do it like maybe two years later. But I went to the doctor. We had, I got a doctor's appointment to talk about, you know, my age. At the time, I was 34. And um, the doctor, I had been on birth control like 12 years. And so the doctor was like, you're kind of old to be trying to have your first child. And then you've been on birth control all this time. She was like, it might take you a full year just to even produce a fertile egg to have a child. So she was like, you should get off the birth control now. Give yourself a year, you know, to produce natural eggs for a year. And then hopefully in a year you can get pregnant. And I'm like, we was like, all right, cool. Get off the birth control. I got pregnant the next month. You thinking you got about at least six, seven, eight, nine months to get ready. I begged Brent to have an abortion. I was like, let's have an abortion. Like, I had just, um, I'm in the final stages of a sports reporting job for CBS on camera, all this stuff. And he was just like, no, it's a sign. Let's just keep it. Let's, and I was just like, no, I'm, I'm not ready. I wasn't ready. Like, I'm even going to lie. I really was thinking about not having a baby. I was going to probably talk him out of it in a couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> but he just begged me to keep it, and I just, I kept it. It's no secret that you are a a well opinionated person, oh, right? Extremely. Uh, and and you stand on it and will bust back uh at anybody. Yeah. I'm just wondering how did you get a job at CBS? I mean, they they're pretty much part of the the team. They're part of that well, team. I'm going to be honest with you. So back in the day, I wasn't so I worked for I didn't I didn't get that job because I got pregnant, but I ended up working for CBS on the radio afterwards. Mm-hmm. Because on camera, they don't want pregnant women covering sports. That's just what it is. But I did radio for six years. But so what happened is before I got with Brent and before he became wealthy, I couldn't talk like I do now. I couldn't. There was no way someone was going to keep me. I had I kept it PG. I kept it down because I had bills to pay. Yeah. I, had, I wanted to succeed. I wanted to do things. And I tell him always to this day that he gave me my First Amendment rights because once I became rich, I'm going to say it exactly <laughs> the way I want to fucking say it because you can't cancel somebody that don't work for nobody. I never worked for anybody after that. So that's really when I really was able to spread my wings and be my true authentic self when I felt financially free to do so. Just being so real. That, that is really the, I guess... That, that I guess that is the remedy. If you want to be truly free, you have to own yourself. Yes. You can't nobody. Nobody can own you. You have to own yourself. Yeah. Let's go back to the arrest. Oh God! Yes. What happened? What was that? What was the name of that place? Sun something. Sun Life Stadium. Sun Life Stadium. Go back to that to to the night. That that was after the game. It was before the game. It was before it was before the game. I was tailgating. Okay, so <laughs> you were tailgating. Yes. So they they say their side of the story. This is Miami PD says mm-hmm. that you were in an unrestricted area and yeah. you head butted a police officer. You was belligerent and you told her kiss my ass in the darkest part. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, well, they, you say that part. They lied, but, but, but yes. But that was your attitude. Mm-hmm. Well, what's the true story? So I had a radio show at that time. I was covering the Dolphins, and um, my radio show was very successful. And since I knew that I had so many people listening to me because I gave great takes, I gave great analytical reviews, pre-game, post-game, everything, I had a large audience. And when I realized that, I decided to have a segment of my show where I covered Miami-Dade police uh, brutality uh, incidents. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to listen to my takes, you're going to hear about the fucked up Miami-Dade police department also. So I got a lot of people that will call in black. I don't listen to this show for you to talk about the police. Stick to sports. Stick to sports. Then don't listen because I'm, I'm black. 
and I'm going to tell you what they're doing to us. At mm-hmm. the same time, I'm going to give you these Dolphins reviews and all this stuff. I'm going to tell you this. So I got, I used to get threats from people that claim to be in Miami-Dade Police Department. You never know. You know, when people are calling, you never know if they're really police or whatever. But that particular week, I had gotten a lot of threats from the police, people that claim to be the police department. Everybody knows I tailgate every single game, home and road. I'm in the exact same spot at the home games. Same, I have the same spot every time. That particular day, the night, the day before, we were playing the Buffalo Bills, and I called the Buffalo Bills. The I called Buffalo the armpit of America, the city itself. <laughs> Damn, Nico. Let me just say, I've been there so many times and that city just, I don't know why it exists. I really just don't know what, what, why is Buffalo there? Why? Why is there a football team? There is nothing in that city. Well, the, well, the football team was there to whip the Oilers ass back in the day. The, yeah. The, with, the, with the greatest comeback in NFL history. But, That's what they were born for. Yeah, but it just, I hated going there. I hated it. It was just a boring dreadful town it was always freezing rain or snow it just was a normal so a lot of the the bills fans were calling in too saying yo we gonna run into you at the stadium like did you know just talk, trash talking or whatever and i'm just like whatever i have a time of my life at the tailgate and one of my girlfriends that was with me she had never been to a football game before she flew in for the game and everything so i'm taking her into the stadium she's drunk i'm like we're arm locked Walking into the stadium. Now, this tailgate has been shut down. It's almost game time. It's about 30, 40 minutes before the game. And I have a separate interest that I come into because I was a part of the 72 club. I don't know if you know what that is. It's like these elite that, that's, that's, the white that's seats. That's the team that won all of the games, right? Yeah, the, the year, Dolphins. The year. They went undefeated. Yeah, yeah. right. So there's a, 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 it's like a own little, like a suite, but it's on the, the it's like on the floor. Like it's like a, it's like a thousand dollars a game to sit in these seats. Mm-hmm. I had, season tickets in that in that area. Mm-hmm. But you have a private entrance that you come into. Well, this was the very first game that they had redid the stadium, so they kind of screwed up the way you get in and out. And I couldn't get in because as I'm trying to walk through the crowd, Bills fans are throwing beers at me and trash talking me, throwing food. They're, they're like mad because I said the armpit thing or whatever, and I'm I'm cool with that. I, I can handle that. That don't bother me. I, I'm, I'm cool with that. But my girlfriend is freaking out. And she's just like she's sobering up also. She just like, why is everybody attacking <laughs> us? Like, what's going on? And I'm like, oh my God, this is so embarrassing, right? So I call the dolphins and I say, Hey, I'm having some trouble getting to my section to get into the stadium. The fans are a little crazy. I need an escort into the stadium. And they were like, Okay, we can't get through there either. It is jam-packed. It is crazy, right? They were like, can you go back to your tailgate to the where you could drive around where the cars are? We'll pick you up in a, a golf cart back there and we'll drive you around. We can't come through that crowd with the golf cart. And I said, okay, cool. They was like, told me what section to go to. Mind you, people are still, some people don't go inside for the game. They stay outside and watch on their TV outside. They don't even have tickets. So the tailgating area is never closed. Even after the game, two or three hours afterwards, you can still stay and hang out, everything. It's not a problem. So I go back and walk to the tailgate area to meet them, and a cop sees me, and he comes. As I'm walking, he shoves both of us to the ground and says, you can't go through here. And I said, why the fuck can't I? Well, first of all, why are you putting your fucking hands on me? Like, you can use your voice. Don't touch me. And he was like, Go back the other fucking way. I'm not letting you go this way. And I said, why not? And he was like, this this area is, is restricted for you. And I was like, this is the stupidest shit I've ever heard. And I, I just said, you know what? Fuck him. I turn around with my girlfriend. I'm pulling my phone. I'm calling the Dolphins back to let them know that this police officer won't even let me go back through that way. As I'm making the phone call, I get choke slammed to the ground. From behind, by the way. I don't know who it is. I think it's, I actually think it's a Bills fan because of what had happened. So my natural reaction, what would you do? Swing on that. I'm swinging. Yeah. It's a cop. It's a cop. And he little, he bite size. So I feel like I could take him a little bit. I didn't really, you know what I'm saying? I just know it's somebody smaller than me because I can feel his body on, on my back. And I kind of flip over and I'm trying to get, you know, and I'm like, this is a fucking cop. Next thing I know, it's four cops on top of me. And I'm like, what the fuck? My friend, homegirl, screaming. She's just like, what's going on? What's going on? And they're they're attacking me. 
You know, they're going crazy. And I'm just like, what the fuck, right? And I'm like, and so then they handcuff me. And I'm like, why the fuck am I? That's the part when somebody started recording right there. That nobody recorded the attack, mm. right? And I'm like, what, what the fuck is going on? They're like, just relax. Just fucking relax. So then they call this black woman over, a, a bike cop. She comes over and she's like, Miko, just calm down. Just relax. Just just please, just, just, uh, just relax. And I said, fuck, no, I'm not relaxing. First of all, I'm fucked up. You know what I'm saying? They choke slam me. My boobs hurt. Like, I'm hurting. My body hurts. You know? And I'm just like, take the fucking handcuffs off me. Like, right now. She was like, just hold on. Like, you you go on, you crazy right now. They ain't going to take them off till you calm down. And I'm like, and I'm not going to calm down. Why the fuck am I handcuffed? Why the fuck did I just get choke slammed to the ground? And then um, they pick me up or whatever. And I'm like, take the cuffs off. And they're like, no, we're not going to take the cuffs off till you calm down. I said, I'm not calming down. So they get the golf cart and they put me on the golf cart on my chest in the back part. You know that back seat? On my chest, handcuffs. And a cop is on my, is they no, they flip me over. The cop is on me with his knees and they're riding me around the stadium to the jail. With a parade, cop on parade, top of me. Yeah, parading. Yeah. And I'm furious, right? So I didn't even know. This one I learned that there's a jail in every stadium. Did you know that? No. There's a jail in every single stadium in America. Well, there need to be because it's a whole <laughs> bunch. <laughs> so I get in there. There's already other people who are in there arrested, drunk right. people, right? And I'm just like, oh, shit, there's a whole fucking jail down here, right? So I get in there. And so um, the, uh, the Dolphins... People come down, and they're just like, hey, they're going to let you go. You just got to promise not to press charges. I said, definitely not promising that. What the fuck did I do? And they were like, just drop the charge. Just say you're going to drop everything. And I said, no. And they were like, if you don't say no, they're going to arrest you. And I said, arrest me for what? And they were like, I don't know. Just just please just say you drop charges. And I refused to drop it. I said, no, somebody got to pay for what's happening to me right now. And I refused. And they said, well, then you're going to go to jail. And I was like, then I'm going to jail. So then my husband, we have a thing we do before every single game. Every single game. We, he comes, lays eyes on me. We have our little secret thing. We do our flexing and all this shit. And I'm not in my seat. And so he goes to them like, yo, where's my wife? Like, what, what, you know, I've never missed a game. Nothing. Since 2009. You know, outside of having my son, I missed one game. And he, they told him, oh, don't worry, don't worry. Um... She got arrested, but but everything is going to be fine. They're going to let her go. And they were, he was like, what do you mean she got arrested? The Dolphins told him, I got into it with a Bills fan. But they're going to let her go, is what they said. And he was just like, okay, like, you got to focus on the game. You got to focus on the game. They lied to him. So he plays in the game. By halftime, he goes into his locker and sees his phone, and he sees the whole thing. That it wasn't no Bills fan. Like, he sees I'm actually arrested. The funny thing is I never actually went to jail yet. I was still in the jail. They they took the handcuffs off me. I sat in their little break room and watched the game with the cops. Not the ones that arrested me, but the ones that were down there in the jail. Eating snacks, chips, drinks, having everything. Watched the game with them, thinking, like, they're going to let me go. After the game was over, they were like, do you want to please just say you're not going to drop the charges? And I said, no, again. And they took me to jail. And that's how they do. And that's how they get millions of people every day when they violate people's rights. They beat up people, assault people. And when a person is uh, considering uh, filing some type of charges, they say, hey, make sure you don't, if you don't file charges, you drop the charges, you know, uh, let you drop, this your go. Com- drop your complaint, yeah, let it go, then we won't, we won't, we'll let you go. Mm-hmm. We won't arrest you. There was a police, the, the female officer they said I headbutt had a full busted forehead gash in her forehead. Where was my gash? Do what they think I got a steel plate in here or something? I know mm-hmm. I got a big forehead, but goddamn. I never headbutt a single person. I didn't even have an opportunity to head nobody, headbutt nobody. Oh, no, I, I, I believe you just simply for the fact that, you know, I know the history of police I'll stand on America. if I did. I'll stand on yeah. that shit if I had but her. And I'd be proud of it if I did, too. I was going to say, yeah, that's, that's stripes right there. <laughs> yes. You know, like, yeah. You know, if you, if you did it, especially since the, the whole thing is yeah. resolved by that. And, and did anybody ever pay for it? No. So let me tell you another thing. So so I went to jail. I The bail was $1,200. I had twelve. I had three grand on me. <laughs> so... I could. I, I got into the jail. They, they, they. There's a celebrity jail too in the real. Did you know that? 
So there's a separate section for celebrities that you don't even go into the regular people jail, right? So when I get there, they're trying to, uh, what is it called, process me for the celebrity jail. Some big chubby white bitch comes over and says, why y'all processing her for the celebrity jail? She ain't nobody. How many interceptions has she gotten? She don't do shit. Her husband is a celebrity. Put her ass in the regular jail with the regular people. And I was just like, damn, she got an attitude, right? So uh, they processed me five minutes. And she was mad about that. Why don't she have to sit here for two hours like everybody else get processed? And the, the officers in there, they were just like, she hates you. They all fucked with me. It was all black officers. And they was like, we fuck with you, Miko. We love what you be doing on the radio. We we riding with you. So they processed me quickly, got me in there quickly. And um, I had already bailed out. When I got in there, my bail was already in there. And so they was like, you're going to be in here maybe an hour. You're going to be out. She made me sit for nine hours in jail. And then they passed around these bologna and cheese so she sandwiches. Only got, you only was released after she got off. Yes, yeah. They was passing out bologna and cheese sandwiches and oranges. And so so I was sitting in the orange jumpsuit where you could still make the phone calls and stuff, right? So I had to call um, the Dolphins um, head of security because he had a, you could only use 305 numbers because you're in Miami. My Our numbers was 954, so I couldn't even call Brent. So I had to call the Dolphins, and they would call Brent on three-way so I could tell him what was going on or whatever. And then they started passing out the sandwiches. And so I'm vegan. I don't eat bologna and cheese. So... These women that I'm in jail with know that about me. So they all giving me all their oranges and I'm giving them the bologna sandwiches. So I got like six oranges, right? So I'm eating the oranges. This some same bitch comes over like, how you get six oranges? And I'm just like, why are you? I said, I'm vegan. Well, maybe you should stop committing crime because if you go to jail, you can't be vegan. I'm like, this bitch hates me, you know? And then, so when it was time to go into the actual cell, the, the other officers refused to put me in the cell. They was like... We're not putting her in a cell. She already bailed out. Like, this is like, why are you doing this? Like, just let her, like, how long is she going to sit where they refuse to put me in a cell? They let me sit there, and I sat on the phone with Brent nine hours. If the phone call would hang up because they only give you a certain amount of time, I would call right back. The Dolphins would call him back on three-way. And we were just on the phone until they. she got off her shift, and they was like, all right, she gone. You can, you can leave now. And then I caught my lawyer, and then the state attorney contacted me and was like, we'll offer you one year of jail, we'll offer you this. And I said, I ain't taking shit. I'm going to trial, and I'm going to win. My my uh, lawyer subpoenaed the Dolphins for the footage, because, you know, all mm-hmm. those cameras out there or whatever. Well, it's ready to settle then. The, the Dolphins told my lawyer the camera malfunctioned and said, can y'all just let this go? I said, I ain't letting shit go until they drop every charge. I'm not taking a single, I ain't doing nothing. And the state attorney asked me to take a lie detector test. She said, take a lie. She said, this, this shit ain't adding up. How they saying you did all this and you saying you didn't do a fucking thing? It don't add up. Take a lie detector test and let me see what happens. So when you take a lie detector test, you have to get a 12 to pass, a 7 to pass. I got a 12. She asked me to come back two days later and take another one with a different company. I got a 12 again. And she said, I'm dropping these charges. You're not lying. She said, you don't even have, how you split her head open like this? And you don't even got nothing on your head. That cop that said I busted her head open, she refused to testify. She didn't want nothing to do with it after that. So she got her shit split for no reason, I guess. Well, she probably just got a little raise or something and cut herself. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. So they yeah. dropped. The state attorney went to, they asked every time I, and then after that, every time I was going to a game, anytime I want to leave the state of Florida, they called, said I was a danger to society. So I couldn't leave the state of Florida without a judge's permission. Mind you, this is football season, so I go to every single game. Had to go to court every week to go to a, a Dolphins game, to leave the state. And Papa, I couldn't leave my house Thank God I live in a gated community. When they had fucking news cameras for a month outside of my gated community trying to get in to get in front of my house to film our every move. And the front gate would not let them in. Like, would not let them in. I couldn't even leave. When I would leave, I would have to be, like, bent down in the car, like, hiding so Brent would drive me out just so I could, like, go somewhere and do it. You would have thought I killed somebody. Did you file charges? I mean, No, not, not... I had no, no proof. But did you file a lawsuit? I couldn't. My lawyer is Why true. I, I wouldn't have won. It was his word, their word against mine. I have no proof to anything. I, I, don't, think, have I, I don't know. See, now here's the thing when it comes to lawyers. A lot of uh, what happens with, with, with law 
is, you know, it, it's, 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 it's subjective. You know, it's your word against their word. It's, you know, you know it's, a, it's, it's a crap shot. Mm-hmm. But I like the lawyers who will who, 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 who take that crap shot. Like, I like lawyers who got balls. Like, yeah. you know what? They fucked over you. But now we finna fuck over there. I wanted to. That's the lawyer I wanted. I wanted to. I didn't. And they got lawyers out there that's like that. I didn't get that. I didn't. I don't have. I didn't have it. And my lawyer was just like, "You're gonna pay me all this money." I'm being honest with you. It's it's not a winnable case because you don't have any proof. The dolphins are fucking you. That's who's fucking you. They need to give you that footage so that you can prove exactly what happened to you. And they refused. They just begged. They just kept saying, "Miko." Let it go. Let it go. You That's got out. You're free. That's what they've been telling free. us forever. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. And I told Brent, I said, this is the last season you playing with these motherfuckers. And that's when all the other stuff happened after that. And that's when you got the blame for destroying his career. Yep. After that. Because they didn't. They they was trying to make him stay for another year. But you didn't want him to be in Miami anymore. No, and they tried to only give him $4 million. They, he still had $16 million still left on his contract. They was like, we're going to restructure your contract and give you $4 million for next year. You're kind of washed. You're kind of falling off. We don't think you still got it. And so I'm his manager, not his agent, right? But I'm the manager, which means I'm running everything, if we're being honest. And I said, cool, release him. And they was like... Nobody else is going to sign him for more than $4 million. We was like, cool, we'll figure it out. Release him. And they were refusing to release him. So I said to Brent, I can get you released. And he said, how are you going to get me released? I said, can I get you released? Oh, shit. <laughs> and he was like, oh, God. <laughs> he was like, because what he didn't know is I was just, I'm not going to say that yet. I'm going to save that for the book. But I knew I was going to get him another contract Mm -hmm. worth a lot of money. And I said to him, can I get you released? It's not going to be pretty, though. But I'm going to get you released, and you'll get another deal. And he said, all right, Miko. And I said, I just need 48 hours. And in 48 hours, he was released. All it took was 48 hours of me on Twitter. And how long did it take for him to get the new deal? The deal was already done. It's already done. That's how you do it. That's how you. That's, that's how you do it. Yes. So he got three years, twenty six million dollars right after that. Yeah, that's how you do it. That's yeah. how you do it. Was that at any point while all of this chaos was going on that Brent said you're messing up my career? I can't do this anymore with you, the relationship side. No. One thing he did say, because the Dolphins were, they were hitting him up saying, tell her to stop. Get her off of Twitter. And he was like, I can't. She don't work for y'all. She's not mm-hmm. going to do what I work for y'all. Y'all can tell me to get off Twitter, but he didn't have Twitter. He was like, I can't tell her what to do. She's a sports journalist. She has her own platform. She has her own following. She has her own thing. I can't tell her what to do. And they told him, you're never going to play for another NFL team if you don't get her to stop. Adam Schefter was on ESPN saying, I talked to 30 of the 32 teams in the (laughs) NFL, and all 30 of them have told me none of them will sign Brent Grimes to a contract after what Miko has said. And so then he came to me like, they're saying I'm never going to play again. I said, Brent, they also told you that the Dolphins was going to the Super Bowl. Okay? (laughs) Relax. They they also called you anti-Semitic. Oh. It's like if 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 you say a if you it, it's like you can call out all of the black people that you want and it's just you calling that particular person out. Mm-hmm. But if you say something about a Jewish person, a person who has whose faith happened to be Jewish, mm-hmm. you're anti-Semitic. Mm-hmm. You're not anti-black though. You're not anti-black. Anti-white, uh, anti-you're not, uh, yeah, yeah. You just they control everything. Yeah, I mean, all I said was that um, I, I actually was giving props. I said I got to give props to the Jews, man. They keep their people employed. That's mm-hmm. one thing about it. Uh, I said Mike Tannenbaum is one of the worst GMs 
in the NFL and he just keeps getting jobs and it's because he's Jewish. I, I said, I wish black people was like Jewish people and we just kept hiring our people and saying, fuck everybody. And that's why I was called anti-Semitic. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy to me. Yeah. Well, that's that's just, that's a, that's a tactic that is used to protect, you know, what they have and that, mm-hmm. that they're, they're, that, that, and keep the power structure in place. Mm-hmm. You use that tactic. To and shut you up. That's to, just to instill fear in everybody. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't care what you say. If you, if you, you can use all the N words you want to use. We, You're we'll, fine. Let you, we'll let you use all the We'll let you talk about killing your own people all day long. Yep. But if you say one, one thing, thing about one person who happened to be Jewish, Done. we're going to turn that into a whole anti Semitic thing and mm-hmm. we're going to get rid of you. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. But I think people saw through that. I yeah. think uh, most and, people. And nobody went back after that arrest. Nobody went back and realized that the state attorney dropped every single charge and said she's questioning why I was arrested to begin with. This is all documented. She apologized to me on the stand. They told she told my lawyer to not have me come. She was like the the, the it, this was like the first day of the trial. I, and she said, do not come. It's a circus. Don't worry about it. I'm dropping the charges. She, I, this is a call with her and my lawyer. She was like, I'm dropping the charges. I'm apologizing to you. Don't come up here. It's a circus. And she said that as soon as it started. She was like, I would like to, I like to apologize to the court for wasting your time. I would like to drop these charges. I believe Ms. Grimes is 100% innocent. And I'm questioning now whether she should have been arrested to begin with and what those officers did to her. Nobody ever reports that that happened. And they also mm-hmm. don't report after you ruined your husband's career that 48 hours later he signed for three years with the with the Bucks. Mm-hmm. $26 million later, nobody's talking about that. How did I ruin somebody's career that got three years, 26? And he still would have played longer after that. Brent turned down every contract he was offered after the Bucks because he refused to pay for play for less than $10 million a year. The Chiefs was offering the Ravens. All these teams were offering seven or eight million a year. He said, 10 is my minimum. If nobody wants to offer me 10, I'm good with the money I've made so far. I can kick my feet up for the rest of my life. And the <laughs> true part about it is that there are people who would hear that and say, he crazy, man, he crazy, man, $10 million, $8 million, $8 million, $6 million. But when they hear, when other people say, this is my number, and they stick to it, they call him a boss. They look at him like, yeah. oh, that's real. He right? stood that's on real. that shit. He stood on it, right, yeah. But he, I don't know. I think when, when it comes to money, if you don't know what you will do for money, you better know what you won't do for yeah. money. Yeah, yeah. You know, and not selling your soul should be at the top yeah. of the he list. Didn't wanna, he didn't want to deal with the bullshit. The, like, there's so much that Brent can say about the NFL, like the things he experienced, the things he witnessed, but he just doesn't. He just knew that his family was secure at that point, and he was done with the bullshit. Now, me personally, I wanted him to get more money. I wanted him to get as much as he could, but when he said he was standing on that, I stood on it with him. I said, I respect that, and he retired. Do you watch football today? Oh, every chance I get. Did you watch the WNBA playoffs? Yes, I went to the games. You went too. to the games. I went to the finals in yeah. Vegas. Yes. Yeah. Now, did you? You you never got a chance to play for a final. I never played in, in, in the WNBA. In the yeah. No, because I'm one of the like the original. I I came out of college when the WNBA was two years old, and at that time they were looking for. This is an opinion, okay. They were looking for girls that played at major Division One schools. I went to a Division Two school, and you also had to be a little, a little aggressive, a little manly, or a little. They wanted to me. They wanted girls that like look like men, mm-hmm. that didn't really have a lot to do with skill. As long as you was just aggressive and you was angry, and you, I wasn't that. Even though I I play basketball, I was always a lady. I was always a woman, and I went to a Division Two school, and my agent was like. Well, you know, you have these trials for Phoenix, you have these trials for L.A. They was like, but these teams overseas, this is this is the money they offer if you want to go over there. The WNBA is offering this. What do you want to do? I went overseas. I was, I needed money. I was broke. I was poor. Still in college, I got a scholarship. I had a dual scholarship, basketball and track. I was a heptathlete in college. But I needed money. 
So you went to New Zealand, you went to China. Yes, you, you, you Spain. Went, you went to uh, Turkey, you went Tur to Spain. Yes, Turkey. Oh, I loved Istanbul. That's my favorite country. Yeah, Istanbul. Yeah, yeah uh, I used to, we used to go there about, when I lived in Baku, Azerbaijan, we, we used to, oh. yeah, we used to visit Turkey about maybe three times a year. I, that's my favorite, yeah. favorite country. And I used to go there every single year after that until all that bombing and stuff happened, probably, what, 2005? 15 or 16 some stuff happened over there at that time mm -hmm. and then I just had to slow it all down from going over there it was a little cry but I loved playing overseas like I got to see the world I barely came well, home what's the biggest difference that you see in quality of life overseas versus the United States well one of the biggest things that I noticed is the food portions so over here our plates are this big they're Especially in Houston. Yeah. Texas. Their plates are this big <laughs> over there. Yeah. And the food tastes different because it's less processed. There's they don't have chemicals in their food. Mm -hmm. So you you think the food's nasty, but it's really because your taste buds and your palate is used to chemicals. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like most of their food is non GMO. Like they don't they, they their food is just different. Completely different. But you also have to deal with things like uh, like when I was in Istanbul, I had to learn that I couldn't walk in front of men. Mm -hmm. I had to walk on a certain side of the sidewalk. Like there was just cultural differences, you know, just stuff like that. Yeah. And then what was better about there is I'm in a foreign country and we have a shit ton of fans in the crowd. And at their stadiums, it's first come, first serve in the seats. So it's a line wrapped around a building before the game starts because first come, first serve me, you roll one. And the ticket is $10, whether you were 300s or the 100s. The jersey is $10. They don't rape their fan base like we do over here. You know what I mean? Like everyone, no matter your, your tax bracket, can afford to go to professional sporting events. You know, it's a family event. Popcorn is a dollar. A drink is a dollar. A hot dog is a dollar. Over here, a hot dog is $9. Popcorn, $12. This drink I'm drinking right here, $20 here. A dollar over there. You know, and I was just like, wow. It's just different. It was just different to experience that, to see that, to see how people are just so much nicer over there. Cause I, and it also could be because they don't have as much class you know, we have the lower, middle, high. Everybody's kind of middle, low over there. Everybody's kind of the same. Mm -hmm. And then you have the elites, but it just seemed nicer. It seemed friendlier. It seemed more family-oriented, more fun. I loved it. I love. I can't wait to leave. When my son turns 18 and he decides what he's going to do with himself, I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? The, uh, there's, there was, for me, there was some shortcomings living in Baku, Azerbaijan, uh, but overall quality of life is totally different. Yeah. Like when you just you just think about, you know, your mental health. Yes. It's just totally different. People who have never lived anywhere else, they think this is it. And yeah. You can't tell them nothing different. Can't tell them That's shit. why they say, well, go back over there. And, mm -hmm. and if they knew what over there was, they'd be yeah. trying to get their asses over there. Yeah. But... Just the quality of life, be, waking up and people st having people stare at you because because you're black, not because you're black and they suspect you to be a criminal, criminal. or it's a just bad like, wow. person, but they're staring because they're in amazement of your aura. Yes. You being black, a black, seeing a black laying eyes on a black person. Yeah. It's like, it's something different. They love us. They love, absolutely. Yeah. But you wouldn't know that. If you watch the news. If you watch the news in the U.S. <laughs> yes. You only watch the news in the U.S., you only listen to people in the U.S., you only on certain people's Instagrams who are U.S. based or and whatever. Hating. You wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. You would think that we are internationally hated, but that's a lie. Uh, obviously, there's you know, racism, racism everywhere, all, yeah. all over the world, and there's pockets but, wherever you go. But I'm talking about overall. Yes. Overall, collectively, the people, they are a lot different. Yes. Every country I've been to, I never felt the hate I feel here in my own country. Mm -hmm. Never. 
Not once. Even when I was in Russia, yeah. I didn't feel the hate that, that I feel here in America. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and Russia is known for having... Yeah. And some people say, oh, well, that's because you were playing basketball. Maybe. I don't know. But all I can tell you is I was respected. I was treated great. Nobody harassed me. Like, like I'm here in America, and I could get called a nigger anywhere. I never got called a nigger in another country. Well, you was playing basketball in those other countries, but I'm sure you went shopping. You went went to the mall. You know, you went to the restaurants. You went to the museums, and... You didn't feel it. You didn't deal with it. No. So it ain't because you played basketball. Yeah, they didn't know that. They didn't yeah, know they that didn't I know, played right. basketball. They just saw right. a black girl. Yeah. Yeah. When you were growing up, did you was basketball the thing that you wanted to do more than anything, or did you want to be an analyst? Uh, what 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 did you? Uh, I actually wanted to be a professional soccer player when I grew up. Now, soccer yeah. was my first love, but I I had an anger issue. I used to fight a lot. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know how to control my angle. It wasn't because I just fighting. It's like when I was playing soccer, I was better than everybody else. So these girls would trip me. They would push me. They would kick me and do all these rude things. And the referees weren't ever giving them red cards or yellow cards. And I didn't know how to handle that. So I would just punch them in the face after a while. Like I was just tired of getting treated a certain way. Mm-hmm. And I got kicked out of like every league in what people would know is like L.A. County or San Gabriel Valley. I got kicked out of so many soccer leagues. And I was just like, damn, I need to try another sport. And my uncle was like, eh, maybe you should try basketball. And I was like, I, I do like the Lakers. I, do, I loved the Lakers at the time. I was a big Laker fan, but I never played basketball. This was when I was 10. So at 10, I said, I'm going to try basketball. And I tried basketball. And after, ever since then, I said, at the time, there was no WNBA, but I knew that there was overseas basketball. And I was like, I'm going to make it overseas that was my goal since I was 10 years old. I wanted to be a professional basketball player. Mm. I only transitioned to journalism after basketball, I decided, because my degree in college was in kinesiology and nutritional science. That's like a kind of like athletic trainer, sports trainer, nutrition trainer, stuff like that. I never used the degree. But once I retired, I wanted to be a sports journalist because when I would watch people talking about basketball and football on TV, I felt like I knew more than them. And I was like, that's easy. I can be a sports journalist. So I went and applied for a job, and they were like, do you have a degree in broadcasting and mass communication? And I said, no, but neither does this NBA player, neither does this NFL player, neither. Why did they get the job? And they were like, oh, women have to have a degree. Hmm. So I went to broadcasting school and got my degree and then became a sports journalist. Hmm. So I let the men in with no credentials, with nothing. But women, you have to have credentials to... Now it's kind of changed, but this is back, you know, this was 2006. At that time, you had to have something behind you to get into that field. And now it's kind of changed a little bit, but yeah. So then that's when I I decided in 2006 that I wanted to be a sports journalist. I saw you on a podcast and you was talking to... Was it DJ Head? Yes. Uh, you was talking to DJ Head about the goat of hip hop. Oh, God. <laughs> Tell the people who your goat ah, is and he's why. He's not my goat. Okay. He's not well, my well, who, goat. Who do you think the goat is? Tupac. And why? Tupac. Okay. Pac Shakur. is the goat. Pac is the goat. Okay. In my opinion, that's who I would vote as my goat. And, and why is that? Because Tupac speaks the language that I like. Granted, he made the you know, all the ratchet fun music, but he was preaching to us. He was educating us. He proved that he loved our people through his music at the same time. And then he died in 1996, and he's still like second or third place in album sold. Mm -hmm. That That's it. He reached the people. He put out good music. And he just that nigga, if I'm being real. That's who my goat is. I said Drake because... When people were telling me what the GOAT is, they told me it was not just, it was about sales of music. It's also about lyrics. It's also about ticket sales, like concerts, all that stuff. It's about money, and it's about impact. Those are the five things that I was told the GOAT discussion is on. And who told you that? 
I just ask people. Don't listen to them motherfuckers. Okay, so what what I'm determines? T- I'm gonna tell you what. I did get a lot of people saying Scarface was the goat. Shout out <laughs> Ghetto Boys, but Sh- shout out Ghetto Boys. But I, first of all, I'm the motherfucking goat. <laughs> Talk right? your shit. I'm the goat. Talk okay? your shit. But as far as what all y'all these other people be saying, um, you know, when I look at when I think about the goat, you know, I have to think about. I really have to look at skill. Okay. And I have to look at impact. I look at skill and impact. Impact was a big one for people. I, I ain't tripping on album sales and concert, ticket revenue, all that shit. That shit don't make you no goat. There's a lot of dudes out there who got that, but they ain't got the skills. You mm-hmm. know, they ain't got You're the... You're right. They, they ain't got the impact. Pac had the impact. Big time. The Big time. impact and yeah. the skill. Mm-hmm. And, you know, although Biggie had the skill, uh, he didn't have the impact no. that Pac has. No. Um, and I think one of the things that endear people from different socioeconomic backgrounds uh, to anyone is a person who... Uh, is reflective of the times and who stands up and who stands on something. Mm-hmm. This is why Ali is considered the GOAT. There were other fighters who had who won more fights. Mm-hmm. There are other fighters who sold more tickets. Mm-hmm. You know? There are fighters who have draw, had bigger crowds. But when you talk about impact, impact. this man stepped... It's not even close. <laughs> Ali... <laughs> Sacrificed his career. Yeah, his life. <laughs> his, yeah, and his life. But he sacrificed his career. People sometimes will inadvertently sacrifice their life. It's like, I ain't thinking. On, it, on it accident. Ain't, it ain't that dangerous, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So <laughs> I ain't really thinking about that, and then they end up getting killed. Yeah. But no, I'm talking about, but he Stood intentionally yeah. sacrificed his career yep. in his prime. They yeah. snatched his career away from him in his prime. And there are so many people. Most people, I would dare say 99% of the people in the world would not do something it. like that. Because mm-hmm. so many people be so, like, overly concerned about money. Mm-hmm. Money, 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 money. Got to get that dough. Money, 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 yeah. money. So Ali sacrificed his bread, and he stood and he sacrificed his life at a time when you could get killed for just simply having an opinion, being a black man. Outside of what's normal. Right. And so, and he inspired millions and hundreds of millions of people all over the world, not just in the United States. Everywhere. We can talk about what he did for us in the United States and how he made us feel, how how proud he made us feel. And he was a champion mm-hmm. for us who we, every time we look around, we see so many sellouts and so many people that had a lot, the bright light on them, but they wouldn't speak up. They wouldn't stand. Ali had the audacity he stood on to it. To be a man. Yeah. To stand on it. To be a man. This is why I consider Ali the GOAT. Mm-hmm. Now, I love boxing. Boxing is my favorite sport. And there are so many greats. I mean, mm-hmm. there's a lot. What I'm just talking about, if, if I yeah. have to have a choice and you say, the GOAT, Ali is that dude for me because of his impact and skill, you know. It's his impact and his skill. Um, and Pac is the GOAT to me. See? Because I, of his impact let me just say this. and his skill. I'm not going to hold you. I de- like, honestly, Tupac's my GOAT. But when I said Drake, I really was just want to ruffle some feathers with people. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, Drake is the GOAT for some... People call him the GOAT, though, but you know what I mean? There are people who who consider Drake the GOAT. Yeah, if I really was trying to be honest, I would have said Tupac, but I like to ruffle feathers. I like to say things that get people to talk and to get people... Because if you think about the the things that Drake has accomplished, that the the hate he gets and all the things, he... I think that he doesn't get celebrated as much as he should, even though he's great but people really love to hate on him and i enjoy that because i feel i feel like i feel like drake sometimes i feel like people love to hate on me and so i like to celebrate people that i that i resonate with well i, I think drake could slide up a few more notches if drake was to start stand making, on something if he was to start standing on something 
and make a little bit more conscious music, mm -hmm. m music of the time that reflects. Because I do, I, re I really do believe that artist, an artist's music should reflect the times, the times. that he live in. Mm -hmm. And I ain't talking about, oh, we in the twerk era, so let me twerk. Oh, no. no, it should reflect the political climate. Whatever's going on in the world, whatever's going on socially, the music should reflect that. But if, uh, but you know and, that you get you don't get listens. You when you try to uplift your uplift your people today, yeah. you don't get spins. People hate that. It's it's almost like the system is shunning that kind of music. It's like no, nah, we not we not here for that. Talk about shaking ass. Talk about this. Talk about that. And I think that one of the things that Drake has done a great job of, and DJ has said this. I don't know if he said it on the podcast or not because we talk all the time. But he talks about how you don't know if Drake is pro-abortion. You know, if he's pro-anything. He just keeps everything out of his rap and just makes fun music. He makes club music. He makes fun music. He makes music for women. People were so upset about that last album because they, for some reason, when they heard it was about For All My Dogs, they thought it was going to be like some pro power black men anthem but that entire album is for us <laughs> and all of his albums for the most part have been for us he's smart women are the consumers of this nation we buy everything way more than men so if you want to sell something sell it yeah. to women and yeah. he done figured that shit out yeah no no you can't take anything from drake and he's a hard worker mm -hmm. you know he is a very very talented dude he got his he got his nose you know, on the ground, I'm like, he he's focused. Mm -hmm. And everybody don't have to, and I want to be clear about that, everybody don't have to make so-called conscious or politically, political music or political motivated music, politically motivated music. Everybody don't have to do that. The the cool thing about music is that we have options, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, you and choose what you listen to. Look, I was listening to uh, The Joker from Steve Miller on the way here, mm. right? Um, uh, before I made my last stop, before here, I was listening listening to Cool in the Gang, <laughs> you know. So that's a big, yeah, that's a, yeah. You a get big, to choose what yeah, you yeah, yeah what your vibe is for that day. But that's the beauty of music. Mm -hmm. you know? It's like it's like and and because we live our lives more like a roller coaster than a train track, right? Uh -huh. you know, like a train. Train is like steady, you know, just going straight, right? But roller coasters, we're up and down. That's how life is. And so your mood, your mood kind of swings yep. like that. And so you get into different moods. And that's the way I, I like and I can appreciate different types of music. But Drake, you know, Drake is Drake is that dude. And for a lot of people in this generation specifically, he is the GOAT. You, you know, you may be hard pressed to find people in my generation who considers him the right. GOAT. But in this generation, he is the GOAT. And like I said, he could probably get more cross generations if, if, he, he, did if, he, little, yeah. if he did a little bit more conscious stuff you know he ain't got he ain't got to do all of it he could right. kind of like kind of like mike did it. remember mike how mike yes, did yes he he slowly merged into conscious that's my that's my oh yeah he mike sl slipped it in he on slid him. it in on your ass yeah and to this day you know you hear people quoting they don't really care Hear about, about us, us. You know what I'm michael saying? jackson is yeah. my fate people tr still to this day try to say like i have every home that i've owned has a bathroom, a bathroom, okay? A half bath, not okay. a shower and all that, but you know yeah. you have a little half bath. Yeah. Has, a, has had a bathroom that has been solely designed and created around Michael Jackson. Oh, hell. Every, what's, in, what's inside of these bathrooms? So there have been quite a few. I've owned quite a few homes, but the current one I have, I have a half bathroom off my kitchen, and it has all, it has four of his, my favorite albums of his, like the actual album, the actual vinyl, I had them framed. Okay. Okay. Um, there was a, a football player, um, Ray Edwards, uh, who played for the Falcons and the Minnesota Vikings. Good friend of mine, married to my girlfriend. He got me a hand painted thriller, creepy. It's when you look at it at certain angles, it looks crazy. A big, huge Michael Jackson. I have his. Thriller album, you know, greatest album of all time, like this plaque framed in there. I have like those uh, bobbleheads, like I have every book that he's, that, that someone has written about him in there just to sit and read. Cause this is my, 
This is my boo-boo bathroom, too, by the way. Okay. <laughs> so I have the books in there, so I just read the books. I have magazines that he was on covers of, and it's just completely just the walls. It's a shrine. It's a shrine of him because he did it all. Yeah. He entertained you. He educated you. He loved you. And he was just an overall good person. I really hate people that keep trying to call him a pedophile. He has been exonerated and proved not guilty of that numerous times. And why, why do you think he's not guilty? It's been proven. The F, if the FBI is investigating you and they can't file a charge on you, how much higher does it need to go? Huh. How much higher? You know, CIA, uh, uh, all of them. Oprah had to drop, take that documentary off her website with those white boys lying and shit. She had to take it down and apologize. That's it. That's all I needed to know. Well, I needed some more proof. So here's <laughs> here's what here's my thoughts. What you need? Here's why I don't believe Mike did that. Right? Okay. First of all, let's just put it on out there. You know, we we live in a type of society where it's unusual for a man to sleep in a bed with kids. Yeah, that, I will ki- be the first to say that. Especially kids yeah. who are not his, right? Mm-hmm. But that's us. Yeah. This is our society, right? Yeah. And we've been we've been groomed, you know, so to speak, to think to think that way, mm-hmm. right? This is our our education that right. we've received here like this is how you're supposed to behave as a man right so part of my reasoning is the same as yours when you said the, F- the FBI can't find nothing you know, you know the F- they said Mike got these marks and stuff on his on his uh, yeah, genital yeah, area and, and all you that ain't never seen and they couldn't find it the FBI stripped them down could That's not embarrassing, find it that's right? embarrassing but yeah then on top of that the kids lied they admitted lying the parents back and set forth it up going back we, we've heard those stories too okay but here's the reason why I believe that Mike did not do that more than anything because the marks could have been proven uh he could have actually had those marks on him, and somebody who's actually seen him naked could have Might told have somebody said, "Yeah, said, yeah could have told somebody that oh, yeah, those marks this. were there, right?" Mm-hmm. But here's why I don't believe Mike did that. Mike was so different. He was so different. He loved people. Mm-hmm. He loved people, and he loved children specifically in a way that grown folks. Like, we can't understand yeah. because we don't love children like that. <laughs> right. You know, we just don't. But Mike was really childlike in yep. his behavior. Although he, he was, didn't have a childhood. Although he, was, yeah, although he was Michael Jackson, you know, the superstar, the billionaire, whatever, uh, worth a few hundred million when he was alive or whatever. But Mike was very much childlike, and everybody who knew him said that. Mm-hmm. And because he was that way, and because, I mean, the man had a damn theme park in his house, at his house. Yeah. He called it Neverland. Yeah. Somebody that don't want to grow up. And not wanting to grow up, for some people, not being sexually active mm-hmm. is part of not growing up also. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so I just don't believe Mike, I believe Mike loved kids in a wholesome way. Yes. Pure not way. Not a nasty. So much. Yeah in a non-perverted way, Mm -hmm. so much that he wouldn't dare harm a child. Yes. He would not dare harm a child. And so when you get to the part where you say, well, you're sleeping in bed with the kids and eating ice cream or whatever. That's because you're nasty. Yeah, that's because (laughs) because we've been trained to think that way. But you got to think the way Mike think. And you can, first, you can say that, well, maybe Mike was, you know, you know, that's arrogance. You know, I'm Michael Jackson. Fuck, I do what I want to do. Shit, I want to mm-hmm. I want to eat ice cream in the bed. Why can't I? You know, yeah. it's like we're not doing anything. I'm not yeah. hurting anyone, and they want to eat ice cream. And you know, like yeah. I, I just don't believe Mike did that. And I, and I do believe that uh, I'm one of the type of people that I'm a realist, and I can ride for you. But if I see something, and I, I'm like, it's it's yeah. indisputable. Then you know I gotta call a is. strike a strike in the That's ball. That's how ball. I am too. I was waiting for something to show me that Mike did this, and it never happened. Not right. once. I don't know why people would think that I would even want to support a pedophile or someone I even 
thought, if I had 1% of me that thought he did this, I wouldn't support it. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have to be talking about all that, but I, I wouldn't have shrines of him all over my houses. Yeah. Like, are people crazy? Like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a research journalist. I do my job. And I have seen not one thing that has convinced me that Michael Jackson harmed a single soul let alone children. Not a single... I think Michael Jackson, if a, if a roach crawls in his house, he wouldn't kill it. He'd probably pick yeah. it up and, and, and let it go outside or something. Oh, are you lost? <laughs> yes. Johnny, free yourself. Him. Free yourself He's into lost. the world. Most of us like... Help him. <laughs> oh, that roach. <laughs> oh, look here. I am, I am the exterminator. If I yeah. see anything crawling around my house, flying around the house. Yeah. Um. See, my son has a, 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 a phobia. He has a huge phobia of spiders, like to the point where, like, he kind of low key passes out when he sees one. It could be this small. But my son has a phobia of bugs in general. I don't know how he got like that. I grew up around bugs, mm -hmm. but my son has something that creeps inside of him so if there's anything if there's an ant in our house one ant if there's an ant in his room he will scream as if freddy krueger just came in there and i'm running in the room like oh my god he's like there's an ant and i'm like aiden now come on now now sh stop kill the ant and he's like i can't do it kill it please kill it please and i'm just like oh my god he could have never grew up in my era we yeah. shit. My grandmother had rats in her house. Like, what would you do then? But I, don't, I like, I'm just like Mike. Wouldn't hurt a fly, a flea, a roach, let alone a child. Yeah, he just wouldn't. And I'm standing on that until somebody proves otherwise. And ain't nobody been able to prove otherwise. And they're not gonna prove otherwise. Yeah. How about you, growing up? Like, I'm still trying to figure it out. Like, like exactly. Where did this, where did this fearlessness in you come from? My father. It was your father. Yeah. Okay. He was uh, part of the Black Panther. Okay. All right. Yes. Now we cooking with gas. <laughs> yes. Okay. My Here father we go. is a African American studies teacher. Like he teaches African culture, African history, African studies. And he still does. Well, he did. He had a stroke in December. Okay. And he's still recovering. This is his third stroke in the last five years. It's diet, in my it's opinion. Diet, right? And I've yeah. been trying. He lived, He moved in with us for three years in Florida. And I did my very best to change his diet, to try to help him. But, you know, people got to people gotta learn on their own. Mm -hmm. And so he's still right now, he's in rehab. He almost died, this last one. It was It was really bad. But he has taught me to be a proud black woman. He's taught me about my people and and to stand on things, you know, to always stand on whatever you feel, make sure you know what you're talking about, and stand on that shit. And don't be scared to battle nobody about it. If you have education, if you have knowledge that you can stand on, then you stand on it. And I learned that from him. You have a reputation for standing on it. Mm -hmm. You have a reputation for being fearless, being strong, and also being aggressive at times. I'm proud of that. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. but what what gets to you though? Like like what what gets to you? I hate telling people this. It's my son. When people come for my child, that's my only weakness. Like I lose character. I lose all just common sense. I'm working on that because I don't like for people to be able to push that button and suddenly I'm stupid. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But people come for my son and he's innocent. We call it so what you think of me. Don't speak on my son. Don't speak on anything about him. People just say the most disrespectful things about my son and for whatever reason it bothers me. You know, all you got to do is really just beat one of them up real good and the rest of them will get the message. Well, I can't fight anymore. You know how I many people Not I beat you. up? Oh. You got money. Oh, you, you right. You right. Yeah. I just, <laughs> oh, I, I try to, you know, my son, you know, he's on social media 
and he sees some of the stuff. And, you know, he's even said to me, like, don't, don't let them get to you when they say stuff about me. Don't be bothered. Don't worry about it. And I just feel like because he is the thing that I'm the most proud of in this world. But, you know, it's something to be, something to be said about people who go after people's children, though. Yeah, disgusting. Because here's the deal. It lets you know that. They got nothing else. Well, well, it lets you know that they really don't have a code for their own children. Mm-hmm. They, they're, they're making their child vulnerable, and mm-hmm. they don't care. Yeah. Because you know if you start attacking other people's kids, then, then now the door is open for people to attack yours. Yeah. And if you really love your kids like you say you do, you want to protect them like you say you do, mm-hmm. then you would not do that. You know, wouldn't put yourself in that position. You wouldn't put your children in that position. Mm-hmm. So this just really exposes who they really are. You're right. You're right. Yeah. 100%. I never even thought about that. You're right. I need to reply with that next time and say, wow, you saying you hope my son gets cancer and dies? Does that mean that you don't care if your child, someone says that about your child? Yeah. You know? That's what it is. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Like, people have come for me telling me I'm a bad mother because my son don't have no vaccination. You know, they they <laughs> they come for me and say I don't care about him, I don't love him because I don't get him what is called immunization. You know, like how you get yeah, all those shots yeah, yeah. all the way to your damn near eighteen. Mm-hmm. No, nah, we ain't doing that to him. They say that just because they don't like you. Yeah. They don't like you, so nothing you say or do is going to please them. Yeah. Just like when your your husband was playing ball, like I would read some of those comments, and it would be people that they wasn't black people. Nah. And it would be sometimes people from overseas, mm-hmm. all the way somewhere else, and they'd be saying the most deplorable things about you. Yeah. Like just saying anything, and like I'm like, who is this? I'm looking on there like this dude is from fucking uh, coast, uh, you know. Uh, Iran or something like what? What he? What yeah. did he know about what's going on out here? Yeah. He don't. He saw a black woman that they say they don't like, and yeah. so he don't like them. He don't like her, and they would just say some of the. And I'm and I'm reading some of the comments. And I'm like, man, people, this internet is really something else. Yeah. Like, what if? What if every time you talked about somebody on the internet, it happened they, to you. No, they popped up in your in your house. I know, right? They popped up right said? in front of you. What was said? Scared bastards, boy. They would. Yeah. They they would. They they'd be mute. Yeah. So I've done that before. So you know, like I said, I go to every single game since 2009, and people will be in my comments talking shit. So before the game, I would post my ticket where my seat was, mm-hmm. and be like, and at them, and say, pull up. Remember what you said. <laughs> Yeah. Pull up. I done, I done <laughs> beat up a couple people in some stadiums now. The yeah. last one I had was in Buffalo, believe it or not. I had to choke, I done choke slam a nigga to the ground. I don't even fight men. I don't put my hands on men. Now, if you hit me, I'm going to defend myself to the best of my ability. But this nigga, we were losing the game. This was a game to get us to get to the playoffs. And we lost the game. It's freezing rain. I'm in row one and right behind the, the bench. He comes over, puts his arm around me like this. And is doing a selfie video, like, got me like this. Wow. Like, ah, we beating y'all out. Da, 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 da. And I, wow. people don't realize I take MMA training. Wow. <laughs> me and Britt take MMA training. I spun out of that bitch and slammed him to the ground. I'm stomping his nigga, stomping him in the ground. I'm the one to get kicked out of the stadium. Mm-hmm. And Britt is looking up like, y'all he were, see the y'all... police escorting me out. And I was like, I y'all was just, away? yeah, it was away. away. In, of okay. course. Yeah. In fucking Buffalo. It's, it's, I've had so much shit there. But I've told people, stand on that shit. The, in, in the Saints, New Orleans, a girl was talking shit to me. And um, she was like, I'm going to be in that section. I'm going to be in that section. I'm going to see you. And I, it was a white woman. I said, well, then I'm going to be there, right? So I'm in the section. And she's yelling all this stuff, calling, your husband's a midget. That nigga is ugly. Da, 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 all this stuff. And I'm she like. She used the N-word? No, no, no. She didn't use the N-word. Oh. She was just being disrespectful, saying all kinds of shit. Because you just used the N-word. I said midget. Your husband's a midget. That nigga. Oh no, no, no! no. Nah, I'm just rephrasing. No, no. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. No. Figure speech. Okay, go. yes. Let's go. And so she's talking, right? 
And I turn around and I said, that's crazy. Like, she was in row 10 or something. I'm in row one. And I said, why are you not in row one? What happened? And she was like, oh, whatever, bitch, whatever, bitch. Da, 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 da. She called me a bitch, called me disrespect, saying all this disrespectful shit or whatever, right? I'm like, okay. I said, cool. I'm down here, though. You coming down here? Or you staying up there talking shit? Because I'm not even finna, you know, I'm just addressing her in this way. Well, it's halftime, right? So I'm going up. I need another drink. I'm going up to get a drink. She comes out and meets me on the steps. And they're winning the game. And she gets this close to my face and says, who they? You know, they say who they in New Orleans. I clocked that bitch so fucking hard on them steps and kept walking. I sent her ass down and went up and gone get my whiskey and ginger. And then when I come back, the police is there waiting for me. And I come back, and they're like, ma'am, this lady saying you blacked her eye, blah, blah, blah. I said, let me just tell you something. She was in my face this far, and she jumped at me. And where I'm from, that's a fade. So I don't know if she finna hit me. I don't know what the fuck she doing. But according to her, she just wanted to talk shit. I clocked her. I'm, You know, this is what happened. She was like, she's lying, she's lying. Do you know all these Saints fans that were sitting there was like, nah, Miko telling the truth. You did get in her face. Y'all was talking. It was cool when y'all was talking. You rushed over to meet her and got in her face, and, and you jumped at her, and she clocked you. The Saints fans stood up for you Yeah, like they that? stood up for me. Y'all don't know all this. Yes. Come on, Anno. Come on, Anno. And the police was like— Stand up. The police was like, go ahead to your seat, ma'am. Look at man. Yeah, they that's was like, ma'am. That's why I cut for Yes. Yeah. They st- and that's, that's why, right. to this day, I really do fuck with Saints fans that's because all right, man. they stood for me. And they was like, nah, nah, it was cool when they was talking. That girl got in her face, and she's one punch, I sent her ass down. Yeah. And then you're going to call the police after all that shit you was talking on Twitter. And then you get here, and you and jump in my face, and you get clocked. You should have just held that L and sat out or swung back. You didn't. You fell to the ground and started crying. And I moved on and when he got my drink, I come down with a fresh drink and he go to police. What 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 part of the game is that? Now, did you feel at any point that perhaps a lawsuit would be pending? Yeah. I'm always ready for yeah. a lawsuit. I'm I, let me tell you something. I'm I'm from Inglewood, California. We are taught to get your setup is what we call it. At all times, have your setup, which is your hands. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm down with a fade, but where I, where the era I grew up in, you, you you get a fade and it's over with. Ain't no police involved, ain't no lawsuits, ain't no shit like that. But nowadays, if you got money, people want to sue you. But all the fight, all these uh, women that I beat up in these stadiums and stuff, ain't nobody ever sued me. Yeah. So I got so, lucky. So, so you've been lucky, and so let's count those blessings. Those are blessings. And let's not do I'm that done. anymore. I'm done. Let's get you, let's get you a personal uh, security, what you security a detail. detail. <laughs> yes. Let's get you personal security detail, and let them do that. Let yeah. them do that, and that way, you know, when something go down, he's working or she's working in a professional capacity. Yeah. And no lawsuits will be filed. Even if they get filed, they'll get dismissed because they were working in a professional capacity and they were doing their job. Yeah. And you get to go home and... and Take care of my business. Everything's, you know, you still got retribution. They still got knotted up. It's just that you ain't have to come out of your pocket. pocket. And you yeah. you know what's sometimes worse than just having to come out your pocket is the inconvenience of going through Trial and trials court. and yeah. courts and having to deal with lawyers and stuff. And I hate giving lawyers free money. I don't that's, mind if I'm if I'm giving you some money to, to, to negotiate a contract or something, fine. But just giving you some money to Defend me or something yes, for some reason. Yeah, something I didn't even, that I'm not, that I didn't start. Yeah, something I didn't start. Even if I did something, I did something stupid. Yeah. Like, that's free money to me. I don't like that. I, I don't to, like I that. I had to get my lawyer 25 grand when that when I got arrested just to do all the shit I needed done. And you were innocent. And I was completely you, innocent. You, you were $25,000 that cost me to prove my innocence. That's why a lot of people accept plea deals, accept whatever it is, because they don't have the money to do that. To yeah. stand on their innocence. Yeah. And it's kind of fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, uh, one thing that ain't fucked up is we got Miko Grabs in the studio, <laughs> and she just gave us a bomb, bomb, bomb interview. Fam, I really yes. appreciate you for coming on the show. Thank you very I much. I really do appreciate you. 
Uh, and I think I've learned a little bit more about you. I had some questions that I've been wanting to ask. And uh, <laughs> I think I got them answered. And, you know, just please continue to do what you do, you know, and don't don't be discouraged. Be encouraged. When they come, you know, when they come, just be like, yeah, yeah, yeah this is what ready. I do. That's yeah. what I do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is what I do. And just also, like, one of the things that I do, uh, being I spoke in myself, is when I see the detractors or whatever, the, they're not just detractors to me. They're the devil. Mm. I identify them as the devil. Yeah. And I say, oh, I see what the devil doing. That's the devil. Mm-hmm. Okay, I see what they do. You know, somebody want to try to create an argument out of nothing, want to yeah. bump or whatever. That's the devil, you yeah. know. So they try to come for my kid. Okay, that's the devil. Not saying I'm going to let the devil get a pass. Right. Ain't nobody getting no pass. No passes. But, Just identify. But what it do, once I identify that's the devil, then now I know how to move. Mm-hmm. And I will never move emotionally. Mm-hmm. I will move in a calculating manner. And I'm never going to do what this button, what's written on that button tells me to do. Mm-hmm. If that button says jump, I'm not jumping. If mm-hmm. that button says swing, I'm not swinging. Because that's what you want me to do. Right. And if I do what you want me to do, you're controlling my mind. You're a puppet then. Not yeah. me. Yeah. Right. So yes. we appreciate you, Miko. Thank you. I want to... Thank you for having me on as well. And I would like for you to come on my podcast. I'm, I'm, all, I'm, I'm with it. Yes. So, I'm with it. So we could do it virtually we, or no, we can in work, person. We, can, we yeah. can work it out. You're Let's in Florida, work it out. right? You're, I'm in Florida. How, how far away are you from Miami? You said 30, 30 minutes. minutes. 30 minutes from Miami. Man, yes. I'll I do that for you. Yes, do that. I'll it's called back. Ask Miko. Yeah. And so I had a podcast before, which is the I Heart Miko podcast. It was nothing but sports. Yeah. And at the end, the last little segment I had, I would get people to email me questions or it could be relationships, sports. It could be anything. And I would answer like two or three questions at the end of every episode. Well, now, instead of just being sports, you can ask me anything. And I post it on my Instagram story and you can ask me any question. And I do it weekly. Sometimes I do it twice a week where people just send in any questions they want. And when I have guests on, I, I let them know, here's my guest. You want to ask that person something? Yeah. So if I have you on, I'm going to tag you, and then people can send in questions for either one of us. And okay. what I tell my guests is, I'm going to answer everything. You don't have to answer everything, because sometimes people don't want to answer mm-hmm. everything. But you just answer. It's basically the same thing we're doing now, but yeah. I'm going to probably do yours a little bit more interview style, mixed with questions that people ask, because... I'm pretty sure people have a lot of questions for you. I have a lot of questions for you as well. But I would love it if you would join me on my platform as well. Absolutely. That's done. Thank you. That's done. Say less. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Miko Grimes. Thank you. No more talk.